Um, when I ask most people what, what do they think architects do, most of them say they do blueprints. We draw blueprints, and, and I haven't seen a blueprint for like 10 years. Cause we don't use blueprints ma machines anymore because the ammonia kills people and all of that. Now we just use large 3D uh, and large-scale printers. But what I like to think I do is sort of uh, take things and integrate them together, put pieces of separate materials and, and parts and people and ideas and, and processes and, and come up with new ways to, to make things happen. So, and we're beginning to now do this in, in ways that break down silos, because what we did in the past was architecture, structural engineering, mechanical engineering, and it was all very, you do this, I draw the building, you make the electrical systems work, um, what we're trying to do is break down those barriers, work together as a team, because as uh, Shauna was saying, it's the collaboration that makes it really happen innovatively, sustainably, and, and makes, makes things work a lot better. And I want to show you three things using materials and people, because people are the key to innovation. And the first one is this, sort of, what do you get when you put wood, magnets, these are rare earth magnets, and glass together. Well, it really depends on the designer you choose to put them together. This is actually a, a colleague of ours, uh, Jeff Johnson, who now works at the University of Alberta, doing very fun things with Tim. But he came up with an idea in a way to take those three things and, and created a product. And wh that's what we do as designers, I guess, create products or materials buildings are products, and uh, the way he did it was it, it takes a lot of effort to consider how those three materials come together differently. So he created this thing called the Attractus mirror or picture frame and put the magnets down at the bottom so you can clip notes to it or hang your keys off of it. He used the, uh, an interchangeable glass or a mirror so it could be a, a mirror on some days or Whatnot. And, and not only that, but people don't realize all of the thinking behind the actual material and the selections we have and the opportunity we have when we select them of how that influences sustainability and design. So is the glass actually recycled glass or is it coming first cut off of the factory line? Is the wood sustainably harvested through FSC or some other uh, managed forest that we would specify it for this. Where is this all put together? And this has huge implications in how we think about energy and materials and resource depletion, and now carbon, because carbon is going to be the next realm that we have to consider in the economy and how we produce things. So that, that's just a small project, and all of these ideas have to be sort of implicated in the design process. And for a small product, it takes a few people to make, but for larger products, we, we have to build bigger teams, and we build bigger teams and do more interesting things. So the next one I wanted to talk about is, what do you get when you work with glass photovoltaics? Photovoltaics are otherwise known as solar panels, and an inverter. And an inverter is a device that takes the DC current that photovoltaics creates and makes it into AC current, which is usable in a plug-in. So we, we had the opportunity to, to use these materials on a building in Yellowknife called the Greenstone Building, and we were tasked to create sort of a, uh, a demonstration of renewable green electricity in this building somehow, but we had other problems to solve. And so we put this team together. It, uh, these are some of my partners, um, Mike. Derek and uh, Richard in the middle there, and they come up with this idea. Um, in Yellowknife, we created a building with a, a curved glass wall that had the idea that it would flood this atrium with light, but this, this created issues. When you put a large amount of glass on the south side of a building, especially in Yellowknife, you can imagine in the summer it's going to be a cooker. So um, we 
had to come up with an idea, how do we shade this space? How do we integrate these different materials in a pleasing way? How do we meet the client's budget? Because they always hound us on the budget. You're going to meet this budget, otherwise, you know, bad things will happen. And as I <laughs> this is a government of Canada building, so ultimately, you are all the client, and we have to meet your budget because we don't want to increase taxes, God forbid. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, there's, there's ideas of how do we do all of these things and create something that's lovely and adds to the space rather than tr detracts. And what we did was integrate the photovoltaics, as you see there, in between two pieces of glass so we could build that into that round curtain wall. And that saved the structure for mounting photovoltaics because they're usually roof-mounted or wall-mounted and needs all that apparatus. It prevented the glare from the occupants in that atrium so they didn't have to wear sunglasses all the time. Um, it also helped us uh, really showcase that technology for the users of the building and, um, and, and, uh, and stopped that overheating in the summertime. And it, it, it actually, I think, did a really neat effect for, for the building itself. And that now produces about 20% of the building's power uh, on the peak load demand. And what that means when, when, there's a, a, when everything in the building is turned on, um, this PV array built into that system in the summertime, because you don't have light in the wintertime, <laughs> will provide 20% of that power. And the re really interesting story I heard when we were working on this project in Yellowknife is, little did I know, the peak demand for the whole city for electricity is in the summertime. And why that is is because uh, when the temperature climbs up to about 20 degrees, Buildings are all on a control system, automatically turning on and off mechanical systems. So when it gets to 20 degrees, that's usually the set point for air conditioning. So the first day of summer, when it hits that magic 20 degree mark, um, there's brownouts and blackouts in Yellowknife because the power company can't provide enough power to heat, or sorry, uh, provide all the electricity to service all of the mechanical systems in the city of Yellowknife, except for this building. So because we have the PV array providing that top up, it actually is the only one in Yellowknife that <laughs> actually gets power during most of, of the brownouts and blackouts. So most other buildings have to fall back to a diesel generator or um, rely on UPS backup systems. So in, in another realm, we're actually helping the productivity of the people, the government workers we all pay for, um, in, in keeping on working during those brownouts and, and not only making it a beautiful space and, and um, solving the problems of solar glare and heat gain and all of that stuff that we normally do. And I think that's the, the idea of collaborating because this was a solution brought together by our electrical team, our structural team that says, oh, you just saved me from <laughs> having to take another load down the structure. Our mechanical team, you just saved me from building a bigger air conditioning unit for those really hot summer days because now we don't have all this heat gain. So it, when you integrate the ideas together, that really helps sort of solve the problems. It saves costs in, in, and, and all of the, and the creativity comes out with, with something that I think is, a, is actually a very beautiful, elegant solution to a, to a fairly mundane problem. So we'll see how <laughs> it works. And, and actually, uh, one of the last things I'd like to add is the photovoltaics, um, you would wonder, why would you do it in Yellowknife? And it, it, well, on one hand, you get a lot of sun in the summertime, but on the other hand, it actually works quite well in the winter time because they still still get some sun over the horizon. And what we've discovered in doing this project is the photovoltaic panels actually function better in cold weather. So when we did the energy modeling and the, the, the expectation of the result, it's now doing better than we thought because we didn't really realize that solar panels, when they heat up, they lose efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. But enough of that. Next project I would like to talk about is this building. Some of you might know it. It's sort of in um, the, the depths of our city in near South Emmon Common. Used to be the former Dell call center. 
And I guess Dell wasn't able to attract enough creative people to work there <laughs> in our climate. And um, it's, frankly, when, I, when we went to see the inside, it's no wonder. It's sort of this very deep, fat floor plate, not very big windows or lots of natural light, no opening windows for fresh air. Um, so it's, it's sort of not a pretty place to work. And um, well, we had to also do some analysis in the building skin, and when we, when we noticed it was only a concrete and brick building, that uh, gave us some concerns, because um, apparently, uh, when we did the thermal scan, it showed this. Um, the lighter colors show heat loss, and uh, it, it has very little insulation, and, and we were very, very concerned, especially in the winter time last year, when we actually saw frost on the inside of the building on the steel because basically the cold was getting right through the brick, the concrete, and touching the steel, and that creates a thermal bridge, and that thermal bridge is not good. So <laughs> it's a, it's a, big of a bit of an energy hog. Also, you'll see the seams of uh, yellow down certain areas. That's where the concrete panel joints are, and that's a really big weakness. So we had some big issues, and, and I, I imagine this wasn't a very comfortable building for the occupants in the winter time. It must have been drafty, uh, cold, or, or they must have been running their mechanical systems quite uh, often to keep up with having to heat this energy pig. So we had put our best team on this. Um, these are a few of our colleagues, uh, led by Myron and uh, Stephanie. Stephanie doesn't like her picture taken, so <laughs> that's the only photo of her on the top right there that I could get. Um, and so we had to look at how, the, how this creative team would come up with a solution to suit our clients' needs on, in, in, in a rather modest budget of, of fixing the envelope. So what we did on the, on the left-hand side, you see the brick and below the concrete, that's an R12 wall, basically of what we discovered in that building. So that means it's, it's, it's not even as insulated as your normal house exterior wall. It's that poor, and apparently the design was done in Oklahoma, and I don't believe they really realize we have winters here <laughs> down in Oklahoma. So, um, <laughs> so we, we, we came up with a solution to add a new skin to the outside of the building by adding the two layers of blue styrofoam type of insulation and a new uh, cladding, a new metal skin to this. And uh, that also gives the building a fresh new look. So we are able to take that building uh, that's that and go to sort of a, a new building. And another big idea our team came up with is how to, how to solve the problem with the, the light in this building, because all of the windows are on the perimeter, but you usually have spaces in the middle of the building that you need to flood. So this is a, a picture of when we started to demolish the building. We, we actually cut a hole in the middle of the roof, and we took that hole all the way down through the building and uh, did this. We, we brought in a ton of natural light, because I think we understand as, as designers, people need basic things like fresh air, natural light, you know, running water, um, <laughs> the essentials. And when people have control over their environment and have those basic needs, they actually perform better. They, they actually work harder. They, they, in fact, enjoy coming to work now rather than dreading going to work. And we think that's also part of the, the way we as designers can help build a better, more competitive economy is by really considering the spaces people work in and how they interact and, and play through this space. And um, not only does this add sort of um, value in its capital construction. So in, now the building is worth more to the client. It actually saves them money in the operating, because uh, now this building can be daylit. It doesn't need all of the electric lights. The pho photographer just turned these on because he likes the look of them on for the <laughs> shot. So um, now the building can save about 25% of its electrical cost just based on using natural light to what we call daylight spaces. And we also have, you know, better uh, exterior skins on this thing, so it's going to save about $75,000 a year on its um, heating and 
cooling bells just for putting that couple pieces of styrofoam on the outside. So really, we, we think about these things as an entire team, and, it, and I have to really stress the breaking down of silos, because we found that uh, working in these teams, the solutions come from the oddest people. Like, you wouldn't expect a structural engineer to say, well, why don't you have, if you're going to have all of this light in there, wh why don't you move the light fixtures that you're going to put around the perimeter in this location? And, and it, it, it's, it's really, really interesting where the ideas come from. It's always from the unexpected person that isn't working in his discipline that he was trained in that gives us the great ideas. And, and, and I totally, totally believe that by doing this approach, we, we do much better buildings. And another idea is um, we, we involve the client quite a bit in, in work, so we, we get how they like to work and how this company likes to work is, is allowing there to be informal conversations on stairs. So as part of this atrium, we created this sort of grand staircase that can foster those sort of informal conversations or the or the um, accidental meetings. And this stair, we actually designed to have a bit of a spring in it. So it's a, it's a steel stair, and it actually bounces as you walk up it. And I think it, it engages people by being fun. And as designers, we kind of try to add that element of interest or um, unexpected surprise to design. And that's where I think the value we as designers bring. We don't just draw the blueprints. We bring surprise to a project. We bring an element that uh, people don't expect. And I could go on and on <laughs> about all of these little bits and pieces because it extends not only to the lighting, it extends to even water use, as Stephanie was saying. We're, we're really concerned about water, and I don't know if enough people are because um, how many of you have gone to the the glaciers in, in our parks, and, and they have the signs of where they were at 1916 and 1930, and, and they, they're receding. And for, for me, as someone who's worried about resources, I think that's even a bigger issue than carbon, frankly, because th that's, that's not a renewable resource. Fresh water is, is finite, and um, we need to really reuse uh, and use over and be very careful about how we use water. And it has to be a primary focus in, in now and in the future because that's going to disappear very quickly. But so my point is, in this building and all buildings that we design, is we start to begin to think about how to use water f in, in rainwater harvesting, in the fixtures we select, and, and how we even demonstrate that to people um, and its importance. So. Uh, this one has a 24% water use reduction over its previous incarnation as the, the Dell Call Center. And, um, well, we're hoping that when we teach people uh, as clients uh, how to use the building, they'll go in, teach others, and, and talk about these ideas. And, and you hear, too, uh, the ideas that we have from integration of design get spread because you're right, Shauna, too, about sharing. We, we <laughs> love to share ideas, and, and none, of, uh, none of the things we do, we keep secret. So um, this is sort of where we've left the building. The, the client's going to move in this month, and hopefully we'll enjoy it, and hopefully we'll be able to put more pieces together to build more creative, sustainable, integrated buildings. Thank you very much.